right, we're going to stop looking for the future and take a little uh, walk into the past here. Get this. Okay. No finance for the closures. Our story begins about 100 million years ago in the Cretaceous period um, when the first um, species that diverged from wasps and became what is the modern day honeybee became into existence. This was a transitional species that I just mentioned, and it was instrumental in the evolution of radiation of angiosperms, or the spread and diversification of flora. However, in 1950s, Warwick Kerr in Brazil was integrating the European and the African species of bees, with the hopes that it would be find a more productive and more tropically acclimated species. Little did he know, these bees started to become more and more defensive. And in 1957, a replacement, a substitute beekeeper, released 26 colonies into the wild. These became what are known colloquially as the killer bees, okay? These bees are known to swarm more frequently. They have greater, defensive, greater def defensiveness. They guard more aggressively. They're known to chase prey or attackers up to 400 meters, some say 500 meters, from their beehive, and they've killed upwards of a thousand people already. They're also the reason we have some pretty mediocre horror films already in existence. After 1957, they spread from Brazil, both south and north, into the United States. Some uh, project that the northern level would be about the northern border of Arizona. However, with climate change, they could go further north. And their progenitors have already been discovered in New York, where some say the Wu-Tang Clan and the Killer Bees <laughs> are direct descendants. That's still speculation. I wouldn't write that in a paper. So this brings us to our unlucky patient, who's a 49-year-old gentleman, no significant past medical history, no significant past ocular history, who was stung in the right eye by a rogue bee the day prior to presentation. On exam, he had a vision of 1, 200 in that affected eye. He had equal pupils, his pressures were normal, and his anterior exam showed this. Here you see a stinger with a um, local infiltrate, as well as pretty significant decimate membrane folds. Looking into the eye, he had three plus cell in the AC. He had a follicular reaction on his pupil conjunctiva, but a normal posterior segment exam. There was a hazy view in. So what about bee venom? He has a bee stinger stuck in his cornea. Well, bee venom contains polypeptides, enzymes, and amines, although the most important is melatonin, which comprises about half of bee venom. It's the most potent component of all of these um, <coughs> other uh, proteins and enzymes that get injected with the bee venom into the, uh, the victim. And melatonin can cause a potentiation of secretory polyphospholipase A2, which causes nociceptive problems as well as destruction of red blood cells, okay? It's also been studied, um, studied how the venom is delivered. And it is delivered on a time-based dose response curve with the proper amount of bee venom being about 100 to 200 milligrams to induce the most significant pain response in the victim. This is all very important information. Also, I don't know if you knew, but a bee stinger is a barbed, modified ov ovipositor, meaning in what in other instance the female would use to deposit eggs. This is why male bees can't sting you. Barb being very important. All right, so this guy's not the only unlucky guy who's been stung in the eye by a bee. This actually has been reported in the literature, not a, not a lot, but maybe about as much as, I don't know, AMN or something, 60. You see cornea stings, you can see conjunctival um, sequelae, anterior uveitis, optic neuritis, popular papilledema, neuritis, these things have all been described in the literature. In cornea, they did a case series of four bee stings. They were either in, in, um, in the cornea or the conjunctiva. All four of these cases were removed immediately. The bee stings were removed immediately. One of them, interestingly, was directly in the interface of a LASIK flap. The, un, the unfortunate man. But they're all treated topically with 
uh, steroids, antibiotics, and a cyclopedic, and all had good visual outcomes. However, it's been noted and studied using <coughs> microscopy that corneal bee stings create a reduction in endothelial cell counts, actually quite significantly. So in this 2006 case report, over a one year, you can see that the cell density went from uh, 2,900 in the left eye, the non-affected eye, to 1,300 in the affected eye. Um, in 2011, the reputable journal, the Journal of Cataract and Fractive Surgery, reported the first known DSEC after a bee sting to the cornea. This patient was also treated with removal, antibiotics, topical steroids, but his cornea decompensated to the point that he required uh, cataract surgery and a DSEC. There was speculation that poor compliance might have contributed to his problem. Here's a picture. You can see that not only the stinger, but the vesicle or the venom sac is stuck in the cornea with a local infiltrate. Another case showed in um, the cl clinical ophthalmology that a bee stinger impelled in the cornea and unable to be removed with the slint lamp required surgical intervention where they actually had to do a keratectomy to remove it and suture the cornea. This paper then did a quick review of the literature and they started discussing what should be the management options when somebody is unfortunate enough to be stung in the cornea with a bee. There's no really great um, you know, clinical trial that has elucidated what the best management is. However, there have been reports that optic neuropathy or optic neuritis can result from a periocular or an ocular bee sting. Most of these patients are treated with <coughs> methylprednisone, but some have been treated with uh, retrobulbar or peribulbar or oral steroids. Um, a 1991 article in the, clinical, uh, the Journal of Clinical Neuroophthalmology showed that with an ocular bee sting, there was actually evidence of demyelination that occurred with a delayed VEP in after the, even after the resolution of the optic neuritis, the optic nerve swelling, okay? And this brings us to the point of what should we do? Well, uh, based on the review I did of the literature, you should remove the stinger if possible. I don't know if I could advocate a surgical intervention unless there is corneal decompensation, ongoing inflammation, because there are other case series that show that a retained stinger can be left as an inert substance, because most of the venom is <coughs> injected and delivered into the cornea in the first so many minutes after the injection. Other people re uh, recommend that you remove it any means possible, probably short of a nucleation. But you must remove it if it's into the anterior chamber, meaning it's done a full penetration, okay? Or if there's ongoing inflammation in the cornea or the, uh, um, the anterior chamber, even with treatment. The other question is what kind of steroids do we use? Topical steroids is what's most commonly been used for these corneal bee stings. However, there are, there's a, a few case reports and one that did a kind of a case series where they looked at the use of oral steroids or systemic steroids. And that, which was not a, a prospective randomized trial, they did show that their outcomes were good with oral steroids. But the other question is, could that prevent the other um, central nervous system phenomenon from occurring, optic neuropathies or optic neuritis? We don't know. It's a study out there to be done by you, okay? So for now, topical antibiotics, topical steroids, and cycloplegic is the best course of action, okay? So back to our patient who did have a little uh, bit of the stinger left in the cornea, it was not able to be removed, they decided not to take him to surgery. He was 20-20 at two weeks, he quieted on topical medications, and even though he had per persistent forward body sensation, <coughs> did quite well even leaving the stinger in place. That is my talk, my abstract. Are there any questions about corneal bee stings? Good.